Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. A very biased collection as usual. Um, today I would like to talk about something that I recently used. So I got a little bit distracted to it about symbolic integration. So how does a machine do integration? That's kind of the, the point. Um, so if you ever remember doing integrals or you actually like doing integrals, you probably also know that calculating integrals is somewhat really difficult. So it's kind of a very kind of strange fact that kind of if you have a function sitting somewhere and you want to de derive it, take the derivative, that's kind of easy. Uh, but if you want to calculate the integral, so kind of find the, the capital function f, that's kind of difficult. So this is a difficult. Um, it's kind of really strange. So kind of differential equations are difficult. Integral equations are kind of the same. But just taking a derivative is pretty simple. So I'm not going to talk about how a computer takes a derivative because that's relatively simple. But maybe what a computer can do to uh, kind of do integration. And the result is kind of OK, but not very great in the end. We'll see what it is. But anyway, so I'm using a computer to solve integrals all the time. So I would like to tell you about symbolic integration rules or symbolic integration rules. Depends a, little, depends a little bit how you want to say it. Anyway, so uh, keep in mind that kind of integrals are really difficult. Um, in case you don't remember anymore what an integral is, uh, you're in good company. I had no clue at all. I was just typing it into my favorite computer algebra system. So um, uh, in Mathematica, for example, is really good doing it, or some many, many others are also very good. Uh, calculating integrals, but it's it's really tricky. So if you have ever done this yourself, that sometimes you need to switch programs. I come back to that uh, later on because there's kind of no no uh, silver bullet. So there's no general good solution for that problem. Anyway, integration is really you have a function you want to compute the area underneath the function. I'm not doing any crazy integration today. I'm not doing any crazy functions. That's my picture. Nothing crazy, right? Really, really what it should be. Calculation of an area as a function again, right? That's integration. And kind of solving integral or equivalently differential equations is kind of, is really a key problem. It turns up literally everywhere. Um, so in physics, for example, it's just what physicists do like all the time. They're really, really crazily good at this. So way better than me. Uh, anyway, it's kind of really, really key. So it's really difficult and many different methods are needed. So, so what can we do somehow? It's kind of uh, the overall flavor of this video, right? So I hope everyone agrees that calculating integrals is kind of an important problem in uh, whatever, this world, I guess. Uh, okay, so you very easy hit examples which are extremely difficult. So I have a wannabe theorem later, uh, which I'm going to formulate at least. I should be very careful doing that. But anyway, we'll see. But for now, just take a kind of almost the easiest shape you can imagine. I take a cone and cut it by a plane, and the plane is not completely parallel. So I get uh, this little object here, which is called an ellipse. So call it E. And if you have a circle, so if the plane is parallel, then it's pretty easy to calculate the parameter, so the circumstances of the circle. Well, very, very simple. One of the earliest problems you ever see in mathematics, I guess. Well, maybe not one of the earliest ones, but you see that one early, very early on. Um, but turns out that for the ellipse, this is essentially impossible. And that's kind of weird because the ellipse is such an easy shape, but you can't write down a nice function expressing uh, the parameter of the ellipse. And by a nice function, I mean elementary function. An elementary function is just algebraic functions, so polynomials, uh, rational functions, exponential functions, trigonometric functions, elementary functions. There's an extra function you need to define, which is called an elliptic integral um, to solve this problem. And that's, that's really a bummer because you have a really simple shape and ellipse. It can't get much simpler. <laughs> a really simple shape, and you can't solve an, an associated integral, but this is just calculating the parameter of the ellipse. You just can't do that. You need to throw in an extra function where there is no really good description of that function instead of, well, it is uh, doing this integration step here. It exists and solves this problem. And that's a, really a problem. That's kind of the underlying problem of the whole integration part is that even an easy looking function, 
right? I write down something that I want to integrate in terms of elementary functions. So something really simple. I will show you some examples uh, later. Um, but even the, you know by abstract nonsense that the integral needs to exist, but uh, the function itself describing the integral doesn't need to be elementary in any way. And that's really the whole kind of underlying problem of this kind of whole uh, trying to solve integral equations that you're supposed to solve them by abstract nonsense, but the function you get might be really difficult. And you might wonder whether it now helps to throw in this extra function into elementary functions. Yeah, then you get a slightly bigger set, but there will be still things you can't solve. Throwing in the next one, and there will be still things you can't solve. Throwing in the next one, and there will be still things you can't solve. Functions are just some of what's too crazy. So we cannot hope to do that in general. And people were aware of that, of course, for centuries. Yeah. And the first type of computer solution people came up with is numerical integration, which is absolutely fabulous. It really works quite well. So let me just say it's easy. There are some tricky points involved, obviously. Nothing is perfect, but it's quite powerful. Let me just say it's quite powerful. And numerical integration would be something like this one here. You can approximate the area using rectangles, or you can approximate the area using uh, those trapezoids or whatever, right? So some, some numerical integration. That's kind of breakfast for a computer. It's kind of really powerful. Let me just call it powerful. Oh, I said again, of course, there are some problems somewhere, but it's actually quite powerful. Um, so the problem is they're not exact. It's numeric integration, right? You get some, some value, you don't get an exact solution. So what can you actually do? Can you ask a computer somewhat to get an exact solution? We shouldn't expect too much because of this funny example here. So what is the computer supposed to tell us? The computer in this example will tell us that the integral of the ellipse is the elliptic integral. So it's kind of a, a non-solution. It doesn't tell us really much, um, but maybe for something we can just hope to find some exact solutions. And that's what I'm doing all the time. I have a differential equation. I need to solve it. I really can't do that. Uh, some people are very good at this. I certainly not. So I would ask a computer to do it and hope that I get a reasonable answer. And sometimes I do. Let me just describe one algorithm here, um, namely the one of rational functions. I'm not even describing the algorithm. I've just state the result. So rational functions, which is just polynomial divided by polynomial, and you want to take the integral, uh, let's say the, uh, just without any boundaries here, just, just do that integral. And you can do that symbolically and symbolic integration quite fast, actually. Um, I'm a little bit lying here. I'm relying on the previous video in some sense. So quite fast means n log n squared. So n log n squared in my little plot here is somewhere. Uh, so these are all log plots. So log plot. So in my little plot here, and this is this is not a log plot. So this is not a log plot. This is a log plot. Everything here is scaled by a log. But in my little log plot, so this function here is somewhere in between uh, n cubed and n squared. So it's somewhere in between n cubed and n squared. So it's not so bad. And n is really the degree, the maximal degree of the involved polynomials. So it's not so bad, actually. Um, but I kind of assume it, it usually is once a little bit slower on your machine. You got uh, that there eventually there will be multiplication involved. And the above assumes that multiplication is solvable in n log n, which essentially was uh, the previous video. Okay, so um, that part is good. Rational for integration, rational function is actually good. And that's already non-trivial. Let me show you an example. So here's a rational function. I have some polynomial and divided by some polynomial. And I get an answer essentially immediately. Um, and it's not, not a trivial solution. There's an arc tongue, there's a square root of three, there's a lock. Not so trivial, but you can always do that. As soon as you go a little bit further, so here I still keep the same polynomial, but I exchange this one to a little bit. It's a square root of one plus x, square root of x plus x. It's not a difficult function, but as you can see already the integral, I got an ex uh, answer in this example, is certainly not trivial at all. It very much randomly depends on the inputs. Just look at this kind of crazy object here. 10 million times the axin hyperbolicus of one plus two times square root of x over square root of three. Um, yeah, I would have never guessed that myself by hand. 
And now comes some of the points. So we can do uh, rational functions um, quite fast. That's my theorem. But in general, so this is not a rational function anymore, as you could see, it's just some crazy integral. You may be lucky or you might be unlucky. And it really depends now on kind of the computer algebra system you're using. So there's something called Riesz algorithm, which is a ridiculously complicated algorithm, um, which can compute not all integrals, but a much bigger class of integrals than rational functions. But as far as I know, it's nowhere in implemented completely because it's just so super complicated. Uh, so you, what you might need to do, and I really practice end up doing that, is you open your first computer algebra program, fit it in, you don't get, you get an answer, happy, done. If you don't get an answer, open your next one. Fit in the integral. Well, if you if you uh, if you get an answer, you're done. Fine. Otherwise, repeat. So, um, depending on the algorithm your computer algebra system runs, it might be able to solve your integral or not. Uh, unless it's a rational function, rational function always good. So you might need to vary that. And the whole problem is that all algorithms are just really complicated, and they will still leave a lot of cases open. So my story here is that even if you start with something that is quite harmless, there's no crazy functions involved, it's a polynomial divided by, well, the square root thing, it's not really difficult, you end up with an absolutely absurd result with 30 million running up here and whatever, um, it's pretty crazy. So it kind of depends a lot on your input and kind of varies a lot. So what you get will vary a lot. And that's kind of, the whole problem of integration in general. So I have my wannabe theorem here. Yeah, I wasn't able to kind of make it more precise. That's why it's a wannabe theorem, but something along these lines should be true. So almost no integral has a nice solution. And I mean by integral, some integral equations in elementary functions. I'm not taking anything crazy and I'm asking for a, a nice solution. I'm taking elementary functions and I'm asking for nice solutions. So if you kind of randomly type them, elementary functions, like this one is certainly not random, but, but something like that, you shouldn't expect to get a nice answer. So it kind of immediately leaves the class of uh, elementary, elementary functions, which is a huge problem for any algorithm, which is a huge problem in general. Anyway, so this whole video was my waffle about you should use computer algebra systems because computer algebra systems are fantastic, although they can't do everything. So here was the limitation. So probably most integrals, you just can't solve them. And I only showed you the easiest ones, which already kind of were pretty tricky, um, which runs roughly in O and, and cubed, where N is the maximal degree of an evolved polynomial. And I was talking about rational functions. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.